Welcome to Dog Hugs, your podcast celebration, sponsored by Loving Pets. Loving Pets, that's what we do. Doggy Wanna, dog toys and treats crafted with naturally calming doggy nip. Heather Tug, pull, tug, spin. Equus, USA human grade natural shampoos, conditioners, flea and tick sprays. With your hosts, Larry and G Dog, that's Gerilyn Chada and me, Larry K. On today's show, creator Mallory Whitfield embrace your uniqueness with a wheel of weird. Plus, safety tips for dog bite prevention week. Big giveaway today, so sit and stay. Welcome, everyone. Dog hugs. I am Gerilyn Chada. And I am Larry Kay, and right that tail back there is Spider. Well, you want to come up and you want to say hi? No, he just wants his treats. Because you know what's right over here? The big box giveaway from Loving Pets. Oh, my goodness. So, folks, we have a terrific giveaway today from Loving Pets. And usually I, we're putting the graphic in. But uh, today we actually get to, get to do a live unboxing to show you what you will win. Spider obviously is very excited. <laughs> so, driving him crazy. Oh my goodness! Do you want the paper spider? Nope. <laughs> he, he went for it. Look at this. The foundations treats. This That's is crazy. great, and it comes. Geraldine, it's it's a color coded carabiner, so I can put yes. it on my back. Bell. Yeah, or or even your dog leash. Or your dog leash. Or Orange salmon. is salmon. Yeah, or on my dog leash, right. Yes. Salmon. Blue for tuna. Blue. I don't remember. Blue for lamb. You're pulling me on you're pulling my you're pulling me out of the I don't have the my stops. There are a couple I don't have here because my dogs are allergic to them. They love all other four. My I don't have lamb here. I have chicken. I give the lamb away. <laughs> yeah, we got my dogs love them, and they're so tiny. They're the perfect size. I love them because they are not only the perfect size; they're not messy. They don't leave a bunch of crumbs at the bottom of the bag or in my pocket if I have them in my pocket, which is fantastic. Yes, yeah. we'll get spiders people. started. Right with some. Come here, buddy. See you later. Okay. Um, Love it. Love that. Love your shirt, Gerilyn. Love your shirt. <laughs> Thank you. We, uh, you must have gotten the memo. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Don't Thank you so much for having these printed up. These are just beautiful. They're fantastic. Yeah. And so if you, uh, when you're going to join in on the giveaway today, and when you do, if you are one of our prior winners, which we know who you are, <laughs> what's your number? <laughs> we have a beautiful dog hug shirt for you after you kind of pass down the line of treats as this, these amazing multiple winner, uh, have multiple winner itis. I love that. Yeah, it's here. really great. Yeah. So you get a choice of a t-shirt or a book, a si autograph book. Okay, yeah. so great T-shirts. Um, I love these. I wear them. I love them. Um, we have an amazing guest uh, today, uh, Mallory Whitfield. You know, she helps us celebrate our uniqueness with the Wheel of Weird. Geraldine, what is something that is weird or fun? about you and folks what is something that's weird or fun about you i know right mallory comes in like sideways like she's skidding in on like like so there's no snow right now so a skateboard or something she's or a roller skate, sliding in sideways and stopping right in front of us with this wow in your face what is weird about you that other people think is weird yeah. something and that they you know you learn to accept as you as you get to know someone and i know that Many people out there and many customers and friends and family have called me dog crazy or cat crazy because I've been working with animals since I was very young. 
And so that's kind of weird because not many people have that opportunity. And I was lucky enough to be able to have that in my life. And but it is a little strange. And once you get to know me, you realize I'm not covered in fur. Well, yeah, I am, but shedding from my border collie. <laughs> so, so. Yeah. It's true, Geraldine. It's like who you are. You are G Dog. It is weird. But yeah. so that, that should help. I'm, we're hoping that your takeaway today is to embrace your weird and to embrace other people's weird as well. It's we're all unique. We all have these gifts, and people are working on this path to discover their gifts and and in a way exploit those gifts to help others, which we love here at Dog Hugs. We love anyone that does that. So shout out about your weird today. We would love to hear about your weird. Ooh, um, yeah. And and one of the reasons we really want to celebrate it is because May is for humans, mental health month. And sometimes we mistake the weird as something that's wrong and that it makes us sick in the head or sick in the body or both. And so we want to celebrate. Yes, we have our weirds. And so many people do have mental health issues in their families. We don't talk about it very much. However, I've trained for so many families and I've I've actually witnessed a lot of the mental health issues that occur. I remember my great grandfather, I believe, um, passed away really early in my grandmother's life. So it caused her some mental health issues. It's just part of, and then understanding those helps you train yourself better and know where you operate from and, and helps you get on a great foundation. So we're all about supporting your weird today. And you're going to love Mallory's advice and just the way that she presents all of this. And, and you know, your dog accepts your weird regardless. So. One of the things that helps me celebrate my weird is that my alter ego is Kermit the Frog. <laughs> and uh, and I wear these shoes. Oops, you can't see them. I'll have to take it off. They're not green like Kermit, but, you know, it's just crazy enough to be weird. And I'll wear those with a suit when I'm performing, uh, doing a keynote speech on stage. And it helps me to bring up that weird in me. Um, Positive trigger. Well, it's your positive trigger that helps keep you focused and balanced in that moment for that event. And it's just a really great way to ground yourself and have something to operate from. So yeah, it's really true. Yes. Um, now we want to also introduce uh, you to Dog Bite Prevention Month, which we know was last month. And it was so important that we're celebrating it again this month. Really important stuff. We got safety tips, all kinds of stuff with you. And here is Mallory Whitfield with her dog, Yoshi, who was very reactive. And uh, Geraldine and I uh, take a moment to share this with her. So enjoy this film with Mallory and Whit Mallory Whitfield and Yoshi. Whitfield, it's great to see you. And Yoshi, tell us about Yoshi. Yoshi, um, I just finally adopted him a couple of weeks ago, but I've been fostering him since the beginning of February. So he um, he had been in the foster system for a while, had been like passed around from foster to foster and living with some trainers and stuff. We think he's about three years old. And he looks so mellow right now. He's just doing great because we've been talking, you know, in the past months. You knew that you were walking into a situation to foster with Yoshi having some aggressive issues. So talk a little bit about how that made you feel, how you handled it. Did you have a strategy and how he's reacted? And I had talked to the, the woman who runs the rescue I got him from a couple of times about some of his issues in more detail. And I went to meet him three different times at the rescue organization before I brought him home. So like I'd met him, kind of felt it out. Um, as soon as I got him home, he is a perfect angel. He's just like this when it's just the two of us at my place. Um, but the first time I tried to have a friend come over to the house after he'd just been here like three or four days, he lunged at her. I had, a, I had him outside of the house. He like freaked out. Like she was scared and she's been around dogs her whole life and has never been afraid of a dog until that moment. <laughs> and oh. it scared me a lot. Of course. And you decided to keep on. Yeah. Well, I think that I think that moment might have been around the time that I sent a video message to you, Larry, and was sort of just like crying. It was like, I don't know what to do. Cause I had been 
I've been reading your books. I've been watching um, other stuff in preparation before I even got him for like any dog, just trying to, it is, I've had dogs before, but this was the first time I was adopting one in this manner um, where I did, I wasn't really familiar with the dog before getting them home. Um, and you know, I was like, I, I thought I was ready. I thought I was working on positive reinforcement training, but this might be more than I can handle. <laughs> it's a lot. I know, you never know. So your strategy so far, what has worked for you? So um, I, I ended up finding a, um, I ended up through YouTube finding a trainer, Tom Davis, who is uh, Upstate Canine Academy. And on YouTube, he works a lot with like dogs with a lot of reactivity issues, uh, actually a lot of German Shepherds. Like some of the first videos I watched were these like very, very reactive, like aggressive German Shepherds. And so I could tell like, okay, this guy, he's worked with wolves before, right? Like he knows a lot about canine behavior. So I ended up booking a phone consultation with him which helped me sort of feel like I could continue on because as we were talking, he was like, you know, it sounds like you're doing all the right things. It's only been a few weeks, like continue building your relationship with him, continue developing structure. And he also recommended, you know, some specific tools and things for me to, to help. So the first time I brought him to the vet, um, I had to have the vet tech come and bring him from the car and take him in and just kind of hand it off because of COVID. And when she brought him back out, she was like, he tried to bite. So we had to, you know, sedate him. I was like, okay, this is stuff I need to figure out. So I ended up um, getting a muzzle. I just have this Baskerville muzzle is the one that Tom Davis had recommended as the brand. And I used peanut butter inside of it to get Yoshi to like, you know, be receptive to wearing it and everything. He doesn't love it, but he's gotten to the point where if we're going to go to the vet or something, he will be fine with it. And it just, he seems so much calmer in that situation. He's still very anxious, but it's like trying to figure out how to manage those situations so it's safer for everybody. And I, I, I really want to take away some of the mystique of the muzzle. I think muzzles are something you should never be afraid of. Muzzles are there to protect the dog itself too. It's not just to protect other people from that dog. And I think that's a big misconception. Um, sometimes it's because they're reactive and we don't want them, we want to show them they don't have to be that reactive, but they aren't quite there yet. So it's just a way of protecting. Also, I don't, I, I think that the energy around seeing the muzzle can sometimes upset the dog because the person gets upset seeing it. So if we could just change our mind a little bit around that, it could actually help that pet, help them working through whatever's going on. Excellent yeah. point. If, if we're just going to be mellow about it. And it's like, it's no big thing. It's just put on your socks, put on your muzzle. That could be a good thing. Mallory, um, how's Yoshi doing with your friends now? Um, so my friend, my best friend, Leo, um, he has a tiny, tiny dog, Chewbacca. And they had actually been with me the first time I went to the rescue organization to meet Yoshi. Um, but, a, and, and I brought Yoshi over to their house and he was fine, like in the first few days of me having him. But after that, they came over, Yoshi was in his kennel and became very reactive to having them over. But then after a few weeks of me really like working on everything with him, they've actually been able, they come over all the time now and hang out in the house. Yoshi's great. It's really cute because Yoshi's giant and Chewbacca's tiny. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to see that photo. <laughs> we'll be right back with more dog hugs. Loving Pets Foundation's treats are an ideal reward when working to establish a schedule or when teaching new skills. They're small, soft, bite-sized treats. And all packages come with a free carabiner, which allows you to attach the package to your belt, belt loop, or leash for easy access. At Loving Pets, we make solutions for better pets easier. Loving Pets, it's what we do. Here are some dog bite prevention safety tips. Always ask whether you or your dog can greet someone else's dog and respect whatever answer you're given. If you don't want your dog to be greeted, say no thank you with respect. Also, Unless your dog has been acclimated to being touched while eating, don't touch your dog while she's eating. And don't touch a sleeping dog. 
Let Sleeping Dogs Lie. Doggy Wana from the makers of Meow Wana. Dog toys and treats crafted with naturally calming doggy nip. Check us out on TikTok. Haven't heard of the Otter Hound? There are less than a thousand in existence worldwide. Described as the most versatile amongst the hound group, patience and persistence is the Otter Hound mantra. The waterproof, web-footed, shaggy-coated dog is rugged and unsinkable. Even though they are medium in size, they are unbeatable in their ability. Although its original task of otter hunting has been eliminated, it has been replaced with unfailing devotion to its pet parent. Tether tug. This looks like something Spider is going to enjoy. Yes, Spider's going to enjoy Tether Tug. suffer from red itchy skin or flea bites and nothing you've tried seems to help equus microtech shampoo and spray are the finest and most cost-effective option available microtech shampoo and spray soothe on contact why go to the vet help your dog or cat with just one application at a fraction of the cost microtech stops scratching biting and licking instantly microtech smells great and it's safe for use on puppies or kittens available online at eqyss.com microtech shampoo and spray it's guaranteed and now back to the show. Well, dog bite prevention was just covered a bit here. Folks, uh, have you- Big deal, yes, a big deal. You... Thank, you for, thank you for leaking that into May. It's really important that we still continue to talk about that. Amen. So have you entered the giveaway yet? Because you get to win a prize package with the Dog Hugs Five Different Camp Foundation Foundations, treats, and look, this carabiner is brilliant. I zip open the pack and I, ooh, it's resealable and everything. This is it's fantastic. Crunchy. Like it's crunchy. These are great. And they're heart shaped. Oh, that is so clever. They're heart shaped. You, it's, it's hard to see this, folks, but there you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, and because dogs love them and dogs respond well to them. And they're small, so you don't have to go through obesity to gain obedience. Really <laughs> smart, yeah. Oh my gosh, this is so great. So we're getting ready to celebrate our weird. Uh, Jane says, my weird is absolutely dog crazy. Love them. That's oh, great. <laughs> yeah. Kimberly, my weirdness is being beagle obsessed. My nickname is Beagle Freak. My hallway in my office is full of beagle art and my living room has canvas of all the beagles I've had. Wow. I love Des, crazy. I'm not so crazy. I'm not so weird now. <laughs> <laughs> and Des says something that just really touches my heart. Kimberly Smith, aw, I'm epileptic. And my dogs make me feel safe and embrace my weirdness and lets me dress them up. Des, that's, thank you so much for sharing that. Please uh, share us some shots of you dressing up uh, your uh, dogs. Please do. Um, and Pat says, my dog accepts me as I, accepts me as I am, unlimited love. That's great. And Des says, again, people think I'm weird because I have a service dog that I dress up and she has a closet full of clothes and they think I treat her like a kid. That's great. 
Oh, you guys are just amazing. Thank you so much. So much for all your comments. We love when you share, especially regarding your weird. <laughs> your weird That's right. Habits. Well, let's jump right now into Mallory with the Wheel of Weird. So um, I, growing up, like I always felt like the weird kid. I'm pretty sure I was called the weird kid. Um, and the weird kid. <laughs> but as an adult, I've started to realize, like, I feel like everybody, even if we don't all use that specific language, I feel like in some way or another, we've all felt like the outsider or felt like we didn't belong or sort of just like, you know, questioned like, oh, like, do I really like fit in? Right. Like we I think we all have those insecurities in some yeah. way. Um And thinking about weird, like I've also started to then sort of question, like, how we define normal. Right. I mean, even before this last year where I feel like suddenly we're all thinking a lot about like, what is normal anyway? <laughs> right. right. Who set that line? Who drew that line? Who, who, you know, where, where does that bar rest? Exactly. So yeah. take us through the wheel of weird. Where do we start as we spin it? Yeah. So um, it is a wheel, so it's always like you can keep coming back to these, you know, points in it. But I always sort of start at curiosity. Mm -hmm. So whether it's thinking about ourselves and like our, you know, our own assumptions about what's normal or what's weird, or re if it's like judging other people or other situations, or even um, that like a dog that might be a little bit different than what you expected, <laughs> right? Like instead of coming to it from a place of judgment mm -hmm. how do we invite that sense of curiosity instead um because it can bring more openness and more willingness to just like explore and learn from like an open-hearted space and then next that brings us into compassion right which is something something i had to develop a lot for myself um which has helped me develop it for more people as well as for animals that may be a little extra sometimes. <laughs> um, and then after that, authenticity is the next part of the Wheel of Weird. So whether that's like really exploring for ourselves, what does authenticity look like for me? Like at my core, when I strip away what society has told me to think or what I should believe or what I should do, like, who am I really like? What do I really believe and value um, as well as accepting other people's authentic truth? If that's, you know, accepting what they believe as like, that's what they believe. And it's different than I believe, but that's OK. Um, or if it's someone saying, um, that their gender identity is maybe something different than what you might have assumed it to be, right? But like accepting and respecting who they say they authentically are. Yeah. And then the last part is action. And so when I originally came up with this, that part was called allyship. Um, but this, especially this last year, I think to call yourself an ally is not enough. Like you actually have to do things whether it's stepping up for, for yourself to unlearn some of that like cultural assumptions or stepping up to be an ally for other people or to create a more equitable, just world for everybody. Curiosity, compassion, authenticity, action. Uh, you're touching on some components of what I've been pondering a lot lately, and that's about empathy. And, um, I've been wondering, can empathy be taught? I mean, I think it's like so many things where some people might naturally like lean more into that or have more of like an innate skill. But at the same time, I think it can be right. Like like creativity is another type of thing where I. I've always been sort of naturally creative, um, yeah. but I've been in a lot of situations where I hear people say, oh, I'm not creative. I wish I was creative. But like, actually, like there's a whole like you can learn creativity. There is deliberate creativity and there's tools and techniques. And I think empathy is the same way. Right. And that's why I'd like to start at that place of curiosity, because curiosity is a great like jumping off point to create empathy instead of judgment. You make a really good point. If curiosity is our jumping off point, it's a gateway to creativity, to empathy, to being outside of 
the four walls, the little box that's inside of here. Whoever said curiosity killed the cat is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> curiosity is really important in just discovering everything about life. Being curious is what got us to the places we are today. If we weren't curious, we would not have tried a lot of the things that we've tried. So that is such an important jumping off point. It's such a safe place to jump off from because there's no harm in being curious. Yeah. How has this understanding this, Mallory, impacted your life and the people, the groups that you speak to? I mean, this this has evolved a lot from me going through my own like self growth and healing journey over the last few years. Um, I was already, I was passionate about creating more equitable world. Right. But I realized that like, as I started doing some of the work to heal myself and make myself show up in the way that I really wanted to in the world, it helped me be able to create this and be able to talk to other people and be able to like walk the walk. Right. Um, and I know this last year, so many of us have started to shift the ways that we sort of look at ourselves and the ways that we interact with other people around us. Um, and that was kind of, I went through like a very, like just a lot of life shakeups happened to me in 2018. And this last year, I feel like because of COVID and everything else, a lot of other people have experienced that sort of just trauma for lack of a better word. Right. Uh, it's, it's the right word. Yeah. And, and I think a lot about that too. I had somebody at a recent um, event ask like, you know, how do you think this last year has changed all of this? And I was like, I think a lot of people are becoming more aware of some of these issues like systemic racism and also like the way some of just the harmful ways that we have started to deal with things or not deal with things and like, communicate only through social media and not actually really have deep connection with each other. Wow. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's amazing guilty what guilty is charged. Excuse, excuse me, Geraldine? I said it's amazing what people will settle for. Dog hugs will be right back. Geraldine and I truly enjoy getting to know you and your dogs. Your comments bring dog hugs to life. Thank you for making Dog Hugs so much fun to share. You know, if you have ideas for topics, let us know. Chances are someone else is thinking about that idea or would love to learn what you want to learn. And now we're back with more Dog Hugs. So is there a specific shelter you'd like to give a shout out to today? Yeah, so Yoshi came from Take Paws Rescue here in New Orleans. Um, and that's paws spelled like dog paws, obviously. <laughs> Clever. Very. So, uh, and I've been to New Orleans a few times. Where are they located? Um, so they have a, so they're foster based primarily, but they do have a facility um, kind, of, uh, kind of in Mid-City. It's pretty close to where I live in Mid-City, um, kind of just in the heart of town. They have a single shotgun building. If you're familiar with New Orleans style buildings, it's a very New Orleans style building that they have kind of the dogs that are in between foster homes hang out there. Mallory, this show is wrapped in gratitude. Is there somebody in your life or in the world that you love to give a special shout out to, throw some gratitude or a blessing to? Uh, well, my my friend Leo and his dog Chewbacca are, I love, they have been such a big part of this journey with Yoshi too. Like I said, they were there the first day that I met Yoshi because it was important that whatever dog I got was able to get along with Chewbacca and not, you know, like Chewbacca is eight pounds. He is very tiny. <laughs> so. so ironic. Chewbacca is eight foot and little Chewy is this tiny. Yeah. <laughs> Mallory Whitfield, thank you so much for being with us today on Dog Hugs. We'll see you around in the Wheel of, wheel of Weird. <laughs> what a treat. Geraldine, congratulations, graduate. What, straight? <laughs> it is fantastic. Well, it may be straight, but it also may be crooked or weird. A little weird, right? This is a really weird hat, isn't it? And when you go back and you read why they have the garb or the regalia that they call it for graduations, it's actually kind of inspiring the way that we have, like, they've built this path 
and they have this uh, positive trigger that they've created around graduating, which is cool. But Beautiful. It, it kind of leads into our gratitude. Go for a graduate. Who do you got some gratitude for? You know, I have more people that I could name, but right now I'm going to name five. My outstanding husband, Scott Reagan, Bruce and Gail Kriegel, and of course, darling Michael and Lottie Halpern. They are my... Uh, my family, besides my all my other family members, they're my family, and they threw a really great party for me Sunday after graduation. They supported me through two years of really hard work. School's not easy. It is a bite in the tail. Uh, speaking of national, you know, of, of any kind of bite education, <laughs> it's it's tough. But you you prepare yourself, you put in the work, and you and it's really not as bad as people think. It's really the relationships that you build. So I love my family and the relationships I've built over my life. And gosh, we celebrated. And thank you for what a, what an amazing celebration. Thank you for that celebration. Uh, all five of you and many more who attended. But mostly my heart is just full because of all of your love. So hmm. I hope you all have someone you can love today. And tell that you love, inspire them, hug a dog, the right dog, and have fun. Hmm. Um, I'm so grateful. So we have a big giveaway we're about to do for the Houndations Treats, the whole big package of them. And let's see how many folks we have. Uh, we have six entrants. Okay, so here we go. Use Houndations to train your dog to be a smarter dog. Okay. So we we're, have we're, we're gonna Let's set this up and Spider right on cue is ready to do his thing. So we're putting tennis balls one through six in the wheel uh, wheel arama. And we'll give that a, put it on delicate. We'll give that a spin. And while that's going, um, really want to thank all of you for your wonderful comments, folks. Uh, Oh, Kathy Ann talks about Yoshi, Mallory Whitfield's dog. It says, what a beautiful fur baby. He really and did Jane well. says, oh, sorry, sadly, I'm not in the U.S. Um, Kathy Ann, um, we've, got, we've got to start thinking up, Gerilyn, some special e-books that we can send to our international folks when they become winners. Would love to include you in the international giveaway. That's all so in the Thank way. you, Kathy Ann. And uh, Jane, oh, such a positive show. Thank you. Yeah. Kimberly says, love this show. Pat Thanks says, love Mallory's dog. And Sarah Smith from Saga, Saginaw, you're welcome. We're, we're, we're happy to have you. Yeah, big heart from Pat. Oh, so many beautiful comments from all right, of you. Gotcha. Yes, yes. All right, so uh, let's see. So, uh, oh, and Kathy Ann says, yeah, I would love that. All right, we'll figure this out, Kathy Ann, and everybody else who's watching internationally. All right, let's do our let's do our giveaway now. Yeah. Oh. That's fine. I need to stop. Boy. All right. Hey, come on up here. Good job. Sit. There. Give you a foundation treat to get things going. Wait there. Okay. Go ahead. Pick the winner. And if you won today. Okay. Number three. Who is number three? Oh, yeah. That's right. Spider gets a treat. <laughs> Forgot. Here you go. He reminded me, he just put his nose right into the foundation's bag. Right, so who's number three? Let's see, Charlie, our other team members telling us, and it is Pat. Has, I think Pat won before, isn't that right? Pat gets a t-shirt. We're nice. one again. Spider, you're in luck. You get to pick another one. Spider, come here, buddy. He's working dog. He is definitely working uh, uh, part of his purpose to fetch for us. To, um, uh, artist working dog in showbiz. Is and I haven't heard a bark. I haven't heard a bark from him in a while, so I'm really impressed okay. with 
Uh, yeah, see there you go. And yeah, that's right. Pay you, pay you. Number four. Who's number four? Let's see. Charlie's going to let us know who number four is. Jane Pompino. She already won another shirt or. You know, or if you like Jane, we'll reach out to you. You can get either an autograph book or a shirt. All right, here we go again. You guys are amazing. Wait. You know, we'll have to show you on one of these shows how Spider does this trick because it's a, it's obviously a fun trick. All right, here we go. Let's get another one. Good job. Nice. Go get it. There you go. That's better. Number six. Who's number six? Let's see. We love giving away these prizes. This is so Sarah Smith from Saginaw. Hey, what? Sarah, we know you won last year, but this is a new year, so you get ah. to win the Foundation's treats, courtesy of Spider and loving pets. You will love them. They're so fun, so fantastic, and so easy on the user. Yes. And we love them. Well, we really love doing this. Oh, and, and, uh, and uh, Sarah Smith's says, uh, t shirt. And Kendra Jones, hello. Pat says a thank you. Congrats to Pat. And. Uh, Spider is such a sweetie. Oh my gosh, look at all these comments coming in. This is so great. Sarah Smith says Spider is very smart for picking your your number, Sarah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank I think you, Spider's Spider. on the internet somewhere. What's that? I think Spider's on the internet. So you can, he has a cell phone number out there. You can text him and ask him to pick the number. <laughs> I think he's got a little conspiracy thing on the back. On the back. That's great. That's awesome. Well, Folks, we just so much love doing this show with you, and we are grateful for you.